Thanks to Manco.Store for sponsoring my channel. If you want to upgrade your inventory by buying some unusuals or weapons, you can check it out. Or if you want to sell something as well, this is a great place to do it. The link is in the description. Yo, what is good everybody? It's that Russian guy but I'll be here back with another video, but today's one is gonna be very, very different. I wanted to make something like this a long time ago, back when I was making uh, montage videos instead of live commentaries. I never tried though, but it is gonna happen now. And I'm talking about a storytelling video. Yes, a story from my life. Now, I cannot really tell that my life is super extraordinary, that I had lots of insane or fucked up moments in it, but there are some situations that I wanna tell in a video and share it with you, just because, because I want. And today's story is not gonna be fun, it's actually gonna be kinda scary, at least for me. Before I decided to start making videos again, before I decided to revive my YouTube channel, I actually had a job, a pretty nice job, and it was all about selling a very expensive furniture made out of wood. We were mostly selling beds for children and adults. You know, that super safe and cool wooden natural furniture without any bad chemicals and glue. Woo! All the moms or dads are gonna be like, whoa, shit! My baby is gonna be in safety. Yeah, it's a pretty nice business niche, but with lots of fucking problems. Anyway, I got into this job in July 2019 and worked for about a year in this company. When I started in July, I didn't have any experience in sales at all. This was my literally first big job that I had. So it was really stressful because I had to learn lots of things about the product itself, lots of different types of wood, lots of different uh, factories that we were working with. All those factories had different conditions and times of delivery, so I had to learn all that shit as well as learning something from sales, because no experience whatsoever. July was really stressful, but not because I had lots of orders, but because I was just starting to learn all of this. I was sitting there in the shop trying to answer phone calls. I still remember my first phone call, it was just fucking disgusting. I literally was speaking with the old lady for like 35 minutes straight. It was, it was just... Uh, it was really bad, but I guess it always happens to a new person that just starts uh, doing sales. For a little context, so you do understand what we're dealing with here. So we have furniture, really expensive, beautiful furniture, made almost entirely out of wood and really safe materials. But of course we had different models, hundreds of models, every model can have a different color, different size, so that basically means that every individual bed gotta be produced. It takes some time to produce every single bed. And the way we worked, a customer is supposed to pay 50% of the price to launch the bed into production, and then when it's gonna be ready, he gotta pay another 50% to get it delivered to him. So you can pretty much say that it's 100% prepayment, kinda. But of course we worked with an agreement, with a contract between us and a person that is buying from us. So you can already tell that it's kinda difficult to sell something to a person that does not even exist for now. It's not like you come to a shop and you see a chocolate bar, for example, and you think, oh shit, I really want some chocolate right now. You take it, you put it in front of the cashier, you pay money, you eat it, right? Chocolate is real, while the bads are not. They gotta be made first. And you somehow gotta sell the shit to people. While in July I got some experience in August, that was a fire month. So many customers left and right, the phone was ringing 24-7. So many people in the showroom, in our actual shop. It was fucking insane. That was the month when I got my maximum experience because I had to work almost all day long without even relaxing a little bit. I could just go out for like an hour to eat something, to smoke, and then get back and keep selling. It was lots of orders, but considering the fact that our company was pretty small and they probably never had this amount of orders, you might ask a reasonable question. Are all the beds gonna be delivered in time? And the answer is no. Fuck no. It could have been possible, but something really bad happened. One of our partner factories had a noopsy, a big one. You know, there is a huge ass dryer, a uh, productional dryer, let's call it like that, that gotta dry the paint on beds. It is really important because the paint itself is gonna dry for a really long time. And if a parent that wanted a really ecologically safe bed receives the one that smells like shit, he's gonna be screaming, what the fuck did I just got? I got scammed. So we couldn't really sell those beds to people and they were delayed for like a week or even two, I can't really remember, but it was a, it was a long period. After we finished the August month, it was September. 
It was a really bad month because we were barely getting any new orders, but we had to deliver all the orders from August. And what a surprise! We couldn't, because the beds were not ready, because they were not dried, because the fucking dryer was broken. I'm gonna repeat it again, my company was really young, so we didn't really have a department that gotta be dealing with these uh, shitty situations, the customer service, I suppose, where you answer phone calls where people wish you death. So all those calls were coming to managers, to us. So us, managers, had to not only sell shit, but also trying to explain to really, really angry people why the shit is not getting delivered to them. I started having a decent understanding of how sales work, but I had no fucking idea what to reply to those mad people. Every time I was getting a call like that, I just didn't have any idea on what to say. I was saying something like, uh, let me let me get the information, I'm gonna call you back, I'm gonna tell you something, please, please, let me go. I don't wanna suffer, please. We got shit tons of calls in September, man, shit tons. But there was a really specific case, one very special case with a really, really angry man. I guess he talked with uh, somebody else, with my colleagues before, but he called and got on me. I picked the phone and I doubt that I ever heard the amount of swears in Russian ever in my life. It was just fucking shit all over the place, man. He was literally fucking shitting in his phone. And I made the worst possible reply. I said something like, I can't really help you. I'm just a manager. You don't want to say to a very fucking angry person that calls you that you can't help him. You should never say that. You can explain a situation that I'm a manager, I don't have this information, but I'm gonna try to figure out this information from somebody who knows what's up and I'm gonna call you back. You can say that, but you should never say that I cannot help you, or I, I have no idea, you can't say that, okay? So his reply was, okay, fuck y'all, I'm gonna come to your shop today in the evening. That's what he said. I was like, all right, all right, this is, this is kind of bad, but what can possibly happen? I mean, we're gonna return him money because we had money in our shop. We could just return the money that he paid back to him and uh, the case is gonna be settled, right? And work day was almost over, it was getting really late and then the door opens and I realized straight away that it's him. It is him, goddammit. He walks into his shop and the moment when I saw his face and just this human being, this man was straight up from criminal Russia of 1990s. He was fucking bald, he was fat, he just looked like he's about to kill all the people around him right now. He looked really fucking scary. He looked around with his demonic eyes and said, with this, you know, Russian Gopnik voice, Okay, what the fuck are we gonna do now? I asked him to tell the number of his order. He said the number. I went to our storage to check if the beds are there. Maybe a miracle is gonna happen. And oh my fucking god, it actually happened. The order was there. It was in our storage because there are two choices for clients. They can either get a delivery to their home, but it's gonna be a lot more expensive, or shit can be delivered into our shop to the storage room, and it is gonna be free. So, the day was goddamn saved, and you might wanna ask, how come you didn't know that the order was there? Because nobody fucking told us. Nobody from our company that was responsible for delivering packages told us that the order is there. They didn't call the fucking customer, they didn't tell anything to us, we had no idea. And I, as a straightforward person, don't really wanna fuck with that. I'm a salesman, I gotta sell shit and not really care about those questions. So I got back to him and said, all right, your order is here, it's all alright, it's all over, chill out please, we got it. He was on the fucking edge, he was this close to goddamn explode right in our shop, because not only was he waiting for that long, he also took a really long road to our shop, he lived somewhere in the opposite side of our city, and it was evening, so it means lots of traffic jam, it took him about an hour and a half or something like that, to get to our place. So you can only imagine how fucking angry this person was. And while well, the situation was kind of under control, but before leaving, he does this fucked up thing. He pulls a goddamn huge ass knife out of his pocket, and I can't really remember what exactly he said, but he said something like, you're fucking lucky this bed is here today. And I was like, what the fuck, man? What the fuck? My third month on this job, and this shit happens. I was also extremely lucky that I was not alone back then. It was another colleague that was working with me, so we were together, there were two of us, which is a lot fucking better. But just imagine if I was working alone that day and his order 
wasn't delivered there. I don't really think that he would do anything because even bandit looking bitches like him have a functioning brain, sorta. But he was seriously on the fucking nudge, so I can only guess what could possibly happen that day. After that situation I didn't really leave my job, I kept selling stuff, I kept self-developing, I kept earning money basically. A reason why I left this company was absolutely different, it does not have anything in common to this situation, but that might be a topic for maybe one of the future story videos if I'm ever gonna make another one. Still, if you enjoyed this one, tell me in the comments down below what you think about this format, if you enjoyed it, leave a like, and of course subscribe to my channel for more weekly content, I have a pretty big variety of videos and hopefully Every viewer on my channel is gonna find something special for him personally. That's it for today's video though, have an amazing day everybody, see you in the next one, peace.